What is up and welcome back to another Wireless Vlogs. I'm here with Ben, also known as Cornerfly Games. Give us a shout, Ben. Hey guys, how are you going? And we are here to record episode two of the hashtag Wireless Family series. Today, Ben, we are going to dive into what it is to be human and a few of the finer things in life. We are both quite philosophical, I think would be a good word to describe it. Probably the best word. So I want to de dive deep into your mind and see just what makes you tick. So we're going to start off with what is it that you get out of bed for in the morning? What gives you the motivation to get out of bed? Work, kids, supporting my family, I suppose is the best way to put that one. Supporting your family. So we won't go into your family too much, but what do they give you in return? Uh, a headache? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's just me being smart. No, they are good. They're, they're, they're a good bunch, but yeah, like I wouldn't have the freedom that I have to do YouTube or anything without the family. I suppose support yeah support well yeah I get the support but it's also you know the, you know the dragging the kids down the other end of the house to get the house quiet so I can do stuff during the like during the night when your daughter doesn't want to sleep <laughs> is always good fun but yeah no, I, I've, I've support them in many ways and they support me in 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 ways too absolutely and I've been at yours quite a few times it's um you live here. <laughs> I'm here at least once a week. Mm. We do. We have recorded a fair few times here, actually. A lot um, of the times we've recorded here. We have. Our first video we ever recorded together was here at a um, quite a late night session of FIFA. I think we stayed up until four or five that morning to uh, record a FIFA session. You didn't end up sleeping that one, and you had to play soccer the next day. I did, yes, and it was probably the best game I've ever had. It was, <laughs> even though you did knock yourself out. Well, yeah, we won't go into that one. <laughs> but... Either way, it is always amazing fun when we are here and recording together. Mm -hmm. The kids are quiet. It's good. When Yes, when the kids are quiet. What are your favourite moments that you have uh, not so much shared with me, but shared with your subscribers with me? Ooh, it, it, it's, I'd even go so far as to say Rivals Revival itself is in, as a concept and as an inception. Yep. Um, I, I put it out to you lads and went, hey, there's no point in me doing this series. I need, I need involvement and I need consistent involvement in that series for it to work properly. If I don't have, him, if I don't have two guests, then the series doesn't get off the ground. It doesn't go out every week. But you guys give me your time and all your effort and all your banter. <laughs> <laughs> Let it be known. And um, sometimes you do like to make my editing life very hard by talking <laughs> in the background while I'm trying to talk over you. But hey, we manage, and that's that's and that's something that you know I've now shared with your subscribers and some of my subscribers that will listen to this as well, and you know just just what goes into it and how much time and how much effort and you know okay, some of the videos might not view very well. They might even they might not even view in you know double digit numbers, but I still put hours and hours of time and effort, and we all put hours and hours of time into and effort into those episodes and get them off the ground. I think the important thing as well is that even though those views might not be there, it's not so much that we're doing it for views, we're doing it because we have a passion for that. So, Of course. Not, for, not, not once have I turned around and said that, that I do this for views. And, you know, I'm, not, I'm not that sort of person. I'm not one to beg to my subscribers either and go, hey, you know, get more subscribers, give me views, give me views. You know, uh, My plan is in the long term as well to make the Corner Flag Games channel an ad-free channel. Yep. Um, being a person that watches a lot of YouTube when I'm not doing YouTube stuff um, I tend to watch a lot of videos and ads just shit me <laughs> I understand that people try and do it because it's their source of revenue but at the same point I still work full time 38 hours a week and come home and then do all this stuff and I've laid out my schedules and things like that I mean there are some things that I can't predict and you know there are things like Crawley which I'm not 100% into I would say very much anymore. I've sort of lost passion for that. But I'll, I'll end up replacing it with something if that's the way that things are going to go. Um, I'll replace that with something a little bit more 
different? Well, you say you'll replace it with something a little bit different. There is some projects that, uh, in conjunction with a few other YouTubers, we are currently working on. We are. Do you share? Do you care to share a little bit about that? I will share a little bit, and I will share about as much as I did in my update video from the other week. Nice way to time this video. Time, time, time. Yeah, um, we, we, yeah, we're floating around with the idea, sort of centrally around the, uh, the, the FIFA World Cup update that's coming to FIFA 18. Drops on the 29th of May, which is not too far away. Um, but yeah, it was a discussion that Josh and I had at a train station as he, as I was on my way back from Newcastle the other week, as if to say, you know, how about we try something like this? And he brought it to my attention. I just went, well, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll speak to the other lads as well and we'll, we'll, we'll flesh out an idea of, of what we're going to do. And, you know, once that update drops, I'll, I'll, I'll get myself into an area with better internet connection to plug my PlayStation in for 24 hours to make sure I get that update pretty much straight away because, you know, we're limited by time on that series in the way of the the World Cup starting versus the, the time that the update comes out. So there's not a lot of time. We have to do all the groundwork and stuff for that series fairly early before the update drops. And when the update drops, basically nailing into it straight away and looking at um, how, how and what mode is the best way to do it once we flush out the mode that we're going to do it in and how we're going to get around it. It will basically be all hands on deck for all of us. The aim is to get the entire series filmed in one night. Which means it's going to be another mammoth night for all of us, but it is something that I don't know about yourself, but I'm very much looking forward to. It's going to time perfectly, as you said, with the World Cup and with the amount of uh, craze that the World Cup brings, I think that's going to be a very exciting series to be a part of and to record with you. Fantastic, yeah, and that's about as much as I'm going to say about it. Okay, next question. We're going to get a little bit deeper now. Deeper. Deeper. What are your views on our government? Oh, we're going political. We are going political. Oh, yeah. Considering that I have quite a political mindset due to the fact that, contrary to popular belief, I actually nearly ran for local council once. And why do you think I brought up politics? And I'm, yeah, as you know, I've, I've, got, I've got a brain for politics and I actually and one of those weird people that actually enjoy it. Um, so a bit of background to that, I come from a very working class area and a very working class family. Um, the area that I you know, live in has been a predominantly labour government area for its entirety existence. And to this day, even though the Liberals are running around and doing what they do, it's still a very heavy labour area. Recently, things have been sort of swinging towards Greens more so than than Labor, but people are stupid and don't realise that Green's preferences go to Labor anyway. So, yeah, dumbasses. Um, nowadays, I tend to vote on policy more than... Party. Party, nowadays. I'm a bit more wise to things. Um, I'm one of those weird people that will sit there and read up on a government before an election and see what policies they've got and whether they do or do not benefit me and that's generally what I vote on now. Now there is a party in Australia that is well renowned, it is at the centre of many political debates and quite frankly they are the laughing stock of the Australian government. I think you know where I'm going with this. Oh this is the one that's run by Ronald McDonald. <laughs> that certainly is. Now. I want a quick sentence or two sentences. I want you to sum up as best you can Pauline Pants Down's One Nation Party. Pauline Pants Down is a fucking clown. <laughs> everything, everything she stands for is completely against the multiculturalism of this country. Yep. I understand the whole debate of protecting your own before you protect overseas I'm a big proponent of um, all these charity agencies that stop you in the middle of shopping centers and shit that go you know give us money help people overseas and my direct response to them is there are people who are starving in this country that need it 
I will give it to them before I send my money overseas. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of people that are homeless in Melbourne that need shelter. Some of them with, with families that are homeless with them as well. And I'd more, more than happily go over to one of them and hand them $20 on the street than what I would give $25 a month to a company which is taking it overseas. And I, I don't get proof that that money is going to people to help them. How do I know it's not lining their pockets? Absolutely. And as you said, an organisation does need to line its own pockets eventually, otherwise it can't run. So that money has to be going somewhere else. Even if they are not for profit. Even if they are, because they still need to pay for wages, manpower, aids, all Correct. those sort of things. All those uni students that stand in those shopping centres that offer those services need exactly. to be paid. Exactly right. Now, we will move away from politics because... Good idea. You're starting to get a bit fired up now. I'm not so much fired up. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very... Hellbent, I suppose, is the wrong word for it. I'm just very logical in things. Yep. You, I've said it to you a million times before, and it's probably not the first time I've said it and put it, broadcast it over YouTube either. I'm a very logical thinker. Everything has to have a logical thought process. Otherwise, there is no point. Yep. Continue. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now, we're going to move on. I've got a few more things I wanted to quickly get from you. <laughs> we're going to go a bit lighter now. We, we, we've got out of the deep end. We're going to tread water now. Uh, what do you your... realise I can't swim? We will float at the top of the pool for you then. I can't even float. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. We'll hold on to the edge of the swimming pool. We'll doggy paddle. <laughs> Oh, you can doggy paddle. I can doggy paddle. There we go. We'll doggy paddle at the shallow end with your floaties on. Yep. Fantastic. <laughs> I want you to name two of your favourite moments from YouTube so far. Oh, do they have to be my own? They have to be your own. Oh, wow. So okay. they can be co-commentated or broadcasted, but they have to involve yourself. Okay. Um, number one for me at this point, even though it's a little bit older and oh, it was an older video series slash segment on the channel from the FIFA 17 days but the experience I gained out of that and I might return to doing it one day now that I have all the tools to be able to do it properly and the knowledge to be able to do it all in a timely manner as well is the FIFA 17 collaboration series I did with you <laughs> at like 3am in the morning that whole concept of us being a screen within a screen like that night was just fucking mental it like was. <laughs> there was lots of beer there. I'm pretty sure there was pizza on that night too there was and there was a lot of weird conversations <laughs> there was camera fuck ups there were lighting fuck ups lighting fuck ups <laughs> there was it was if, if you want to know everything what not to do in a YouTube video of that type watch that video yes or watch those two videos yes that, that explains everything. But I'd like to return to it again one day and, yeah. and, and redo it. Hopefully in the days where you actually get yourself a PlayStation 4. Because <laughs> that's the next thing. Come on, people on Patreon. Give him a PS4. <laughs> I pay my money every month. You do. And there's one other person, Isaac, who was on last week. Uh, as a part of their Patreon uh, bonuses, if you will. They are the first to be included in videos like this, and so they were the first two people that I went to for this series, as they do sponsor me every week by just giving me a small donation on Patreon, which helps me obviously run the channel and make, not so much make it worth it, but um, help me obviously upgrade my equipment. So whether that be new lighting, which obviously, as Ben saw firsthand, was very much required, mm -hmm. uh, cameras, software, all that sort of thing, that is all done from my Patreon. So I could not thank those two enough but that is why we do have a Patreon and there are some bonuses in my Patreon if you want to check it out because you do get rewarded for chipping in. The link will be down below in the description. Mm -hmm. And see, I come, I'm, I'm actually quite lucky because of my previous job and working in the music theatre industry and working as a theatre technician running sound and lighting and stage management. I've got a brief overview of what I need to do. It's just I need to apply that into a different area and not onto a stage. So I've got a lot of my own personal equipment that I use for my YouTube channel, which I paid for out of my own pocket, which I've got every, like the microphone that's being used right now to record all this, I've had for years. You can't even get this microphone anymore. And it's fantastic. And I picked it up for a bargain. It was 
freaking second hand and it was basically knowing what I wanted and, and, and knowing about how to get it. I did end up getting it through back channels. Yeah. Through the theatre industry. I had to talk to a few people, but I managed to get my hand on it because even then it was four or five years old when I bought it. Okay, now we do need another moment from you. Another moment. So you've mentioned one, which was our early FIFA 17 collaboration mini series, we'll call it. Yeah. We need one more of your favourite moments. At the moment, it's probably... It, it, it would be Rivals Revival. Just just that series as a whole has just been a joy and a pleasure to, to do. I mean, the initial concept coming into it was a, was a relatively similar concept from the 50 subscriber kickoff challenge that I had. It was just modifying that premise behind it and getting all the other stuff again using that originally as a trial series and then going through and sort of having the time to flesh out a more um thought out idea i suppose um but it's the it, it it's the input i don't make that series it's the co-commentators that make that series what i do is purely arbitrary so that the people on youtube have got something to look at when they listen to it all <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah it's I'd go so far as to say that that's I don't sort of look at that as my series per se I look at that as a series that 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 is that is run by all of us yeah. because without the help of the co-commentators like yourself and Josh and, and Tomo and and Dan that series just wouldn't be the way it is and I don't think I could I don't think I could look at that series and have and, and replace that series with other people and get the same banter this, not so much the same banter but the same quality I get out of it yeah I don't think I could get that with another four guests any four different guests I don't it would be completely different you are all four diff completely different people from four different walks of life from four different you know political motivational work life home everything all sorts of different things and it's the difference of these four different people that make that series what it is and yourself being a major contributor to that series as well um i we, i enjoy it and i think it's one of the one of the better moments on the channel the concept of len is we'll call it len for short it's actually called the lads Enter oh, lads entertainment network we'll start with what is the lads entertainment network okay yeah. so Len, or the Lads Entertainment Network, is a small group. Bear with me a sec while I pull up the website. Because <laughs> I need help. <laughs> okay, so the Lads Entertainment Network, or LEN, as we call it for short, um, it's a small network of content creators both based in both Australia and the United Kingdom. Um, and, and our job is to create content basically create entertaining content like what we currently do um on a using a uniform a uniform brand or a uniform platform um you know you, using very different styles of entertainment purposes like this being a podcast would not generally be something that i on my channel would be doing mine is basically fifa videos in its structure and whatever Josh decides to do when he decides he wants to open up his YouTube channel. I know he is looking into it, though. And he does have to. And he does have to. Um, but there is other ways that he contr contributes, too. Like, he may be a co-commentator on my series, which is part of my content. But that's still... He's still part of that network. Yep. Um, whether it, he be a podcast guest on yours, or, you know, he might do a completely different series on YouTube with Dan, or, or with Twitch on Dan, or, you know... It, it's varied platforms, varied media, um, basically to cater with the masses as best we can. It is going to be us creating content that we want everyone to enjoy, but it's not creating it so we do become, as you said, worldwide. It is mm. because we are four mates who enjoy creating content together, and we want to be able to spread that as much as we can so we can find more people who enjoy what we do as much as we do actually recording and making that content. Yeah. And we've all come into this process as well with, you know, the 
the Lads Entertainment Network is not, will not be monetized. No. At all. You know, we're not doing this to make a quick buck. We don't do our content creation because we want to make money from it. We do it because we enjoy doing it. Yeah. And and that's and that's something that all four of us are generally on the same page on too. Yes. We're not in it for the money. We don't want to do it. This is why we work full time. Yeah. But at the same point, this may limit sometimes the availability on time and it may throw upload schedules all up the fucking shit. Because, you know, at the end of the day, aside from yourself, myself, Dan and Josh all have got families. We've all got young families of yep. our own. So at the end of the day, our 38 hour a week job that supports our households is our prior is a priority. Yes. Um, but at the same point as well, you know, you've got your lovely partner. Yeah, I'm calling you out, Heather. <laughs> she doesn't watch it, so it's fine. That's all right. You're gonna make her watch it now. <laughs> Which I'm, I'm, I'm still calling your invisible girlfriend because I haven't met her yet. Oh. That's an old school running joke from one of Sarah's, my partner Sarah's friends, and who I took, who took three years to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to call her her invisible friend. So it's not a bad thing, Heather. It's okay. You'll be fine. I, I don't bite hard. <laughs> Depends who's wearing the chains. Now you made that dirty. I wasn't. That <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. So this is part of the blend. This is the sort of banter you, you can well, expect yes, online. This is, the, this is the sort of banter that you would sort of be on there. Now we do have our own website. We do. Which is, I've been constructing over the past twelve hours. And Twitter. And yet yeah, we've got our own Twitter. Um, links for those will, will be, be in the description. They will be. If I remember. I'm, I'm, I'm hosting your channel now, mate. <laughs> yeah. Just you do going. it to me, so I'm giving it back to you lot now. <laughs> yes, there is a Len Twitter and there is a Len uh, Facebook page. Uh, a Facebook page. Twitter. Twitter and website. Twitter and website, people. Twitter well, and website. We got there. We got there. We got there. Okay, now, obviously the website and the Twitter will be our main components for sort of sharing and spreading the content we create there is also channels that we use to for example record your rivals revival series mm -hmm. we use discord now that is somewhere that you can join and see all our chats you can talk to us almost meet us uh, as yeah. that is how we pretty much all met each other um, and that is where we generally use a small community of us we all spitball ideas we all communicate with each other uh, and that's how we come up and we record most of our videos. The Discord is free to join. You can join it and be a part of our community. You can talk to us directly or have feedback for videos, things like that, which the link will be to in the description. Now, Ben does run the Discord. I fail to see how community-based YouTube channels worked before Discord ever come along. Discord has only been around for a couple, I think it's a couple of years now, but it's only really hit the mainstream masses you know, rather recently in the, in, the, in the past 12 to 18 months. But it, it's, it's a fantastic platform, especially for what we're trying to achieve in building a community with, with Len and Lads Entertainment Network. It, it's, it's, anybody can be involved. It doesn't cost you anything but your time. And you don't even, it doesn't even have to cost you time. You don't have to look at it every day if you don't want to. But it, it's a fantastic application and it, and you can get it for phones as well i think it's on android i know it's definitely on android because i've got it on android i'm pretty sure it's on ios as well yep um and it's also on uh you know windows mac i'm pretty sure it's on linux as well so it, it's a it's a platform that's consistently evolving and growing you know when i first started using it you know um voice channels were in their infancy still and now i use it as a as a mainstay to record rivals revival um is there's things also like uh, you can private message and you can also screen share. So if I'm trying to do something on a computer and show somebody else how to do it, I can share my screen with them and they can see what, what's happening. Like Terence said, it's it, it's about community and we use it as a community and trying to bring everybody together. Not so much subscribers from my channel, but subscribers from all the um, Lads Entertainment Network channels with mine and with with wireless vlogs and with uh, Garfield V2 and all, all that. We, we all want to create this 
environment where we want we want subscribers to approach us we want to be approachable we want to be able to sit in discord with a random subscriber whether you've been there for a month a day three four five years you know where you could jump onto a platform and say you know oh hey guys how is your day today and we can turn around and see that on our phones and have instant access to that and and reply to it you know you know oh, okay my, my day was shit you know but you know we're doing something tonight or i'm recording tonight or i'm seeing terence tonight or you know I'm, I'm gonna sit with my family and do stuff it, it, you know there's that interaction and there's that um again sense of community it's it, like youtubers nowadays or the slightly larger ones as well trying to get to meet them is a, is a very difficult opportunity yes and like we're not massive youtubers we're like little fish in a big pond to be fair or tadpoles in a big pond yes um but you know that's something that we want to that community aspect of things we, is something that we want to keep whether we get you know to the point i am at the current time of this is 112 subscribers or whether i've got 150,000 subscribers or a million subscribers that's going a bit far but you know that that's the thing even at a million subscribers i want to be able to turn around to people and have a conversation yeah yeah you know and i want people to give me their thoughts and opinions and i don't know about you but i want people to give me their thoughts and opinions on the direction and and what, and what i can do to the channel yeah to to not so much to also like to grow it but to make sure i don't lose that community aspect of my channel and not only that is i'm in the same boat where i want to be approachable i want people to come up and you know talk to me and leave me their feedback and everything because that's how you can then make content that you know people are going to enjoy you can tailor almost tailor your content so that way you know when you upload something that people are going to enjoy it because that is what we make videos for we enjoy them and we want you to enjoy them as well that's right i like my youtube famous story yeah yes you from the other week now i was going to segue into this but ben has done it for me oh ben on your flight to newcastle when you watched the mighty victory get up over newcastle shut up did you or did you not now the word on the street is that you met a fan on the plane you were recognized purely by your voice at first on a flight from melbourne tullamarine to sydney i think it was that flight in answer to that question no no oh okay no. story time no i was recognized on my flight from sydney to melbourne. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so i've got you on a bit of a technicality there but yeah what, what this is you've mentioned it to me before when you got realized as, when you got recognized as well um the term we coined the term youtube famous yes <laughs> um so i obviously as we all know i went up to newcastle for the um for the a-league grand final where the victory ended up robbing the vic uh, robbing the jets of an a-league title come on you um, blue there's only one team in melbourne <laughs> no there's not there's two no there's not there's one there's two um but i yeah, g g digressing anyway we beat newcastle we beat newcastle <laughs> oh, fuck off <laughs> but anyway yeah, after are. after the debacle i had with flights getting up to newcastle originally but i'm not going to go into that one because that's a story for another day we'll be here for fucking four hours um i i did i got um on my way home i couldn't get a flight out of newcastle back to telemarine in melbourne um because flight prices were fucking astronomical you're talking about a flight that would normally cost you 95 Australian dollars going for like $499 one way. Like, it was fucking absurd. And I don't know about you, but I don't have a money tree in my backyard. I've got kids. <laughs> so <laughs> that explains it. Um, I've got I, I wasn't going to pay that sort of stupid money. So my other option was to get a train from Newcastle to sydney domestic airport and then catch a flight from sydney back to melbourne i'm actually kind of glad that i did it that way because whilst being at the train station the broadmeadow train station in newcastle with josh who i was staying with who dropped me off at the train station we coined the idea for the next series yes so i'm kind of glad that it happened that way but it's a three-hour train ride from newcastle into sydney domestic airport um which is very long, especially if you don't have a phone. I did have a phone, but it was very low on battery. 
Um, so yeah, it was a very boring train ride. But getting to the point of things, I got to the, I got my flight. I flew Tiger Air. I flew Tiger Air back from Sydney to Melbourne, which is dangerous normally. No, I've never see. I've never had any, really had an issue with them. Um, so I flew Tiger Air from Sydney to Melbourne, Tullamarine, and it was quite late at night. It was the last, second last or last flight of the night back into Melbourne from Sydney. And um, I had people a couple of rows in front of me who had been to the the Intel eSports in Sydney over that weekend um, because it was being held in the massive exhibition centre there. Um, And one of the winners from, uh, I can't remember what game it was, one of the sections, um, was sitting a couple of rows further down from me. And he, um, because that's all live streamed and stuff, um, you know, this person was watching it and they noticed him. And uh, they sat there, they stood there and had a chat for a minute. And I was sort of listening to what was going on, but sort of had headphones on at the same time. And, and this flight attendant was talking to him about it. You know, beautiful, tall, thin, blonde, really, really nice. <laughs> and, um, her name was April, by the way. Um, so they come across and she comes down because they're pushing the tray and the, the carts and whatever. And they're like, oh, would you like anything, Sarah? And I, I turned around in my very tired voice and turned around and went, can I just get a coffee, please? <laughs> like, <laughs> like strong, strong, mind you, coffee on planes in Australia, domestic flights in Australia is fucking horseshit. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I handed over my four bucks and she gave me this, like, swill of crap. But it was something I needed it, milk and sugar and whatever. Put that in, and she sort of turned around to me and went, "Um, your voice sounds familiar." <laughs> and I'm um, sort of, I was half tired by this stage. It was quite late and late at night, and I'd had a long day. And yeah, she, she went, I, "I noticed your voice from somewhere." And I'm like, you know, you know, do you? She goes, "Do you?" Like, she goes, I watch a lot of live streams and stuff. And I said, I oh, know, I was listening to you talking to the boys up there about E League. Oh, not the E League, the um, esports. esports. Um, and she's like, well, she goes, this might sound like a weird question. She goes, but can I ask you your name? And I'm like, yeah, my name's Ben. And she goes, sorry, Ben. <laughs> ben. Yes. That's a long running joke on your channel. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I'm like, oh, my name's Ben. And she goes, you wouldn't happen to be Ben from Corner Flag Games, would you? And I'm like, I was sitting there with this stun look on my face, half asleep, going, are you fucking kidding me? Like, <laughs> out of everybody in the world that could watch my YouTube channel, you are one. She was one. She is a subscriber. Funnily enough, she's been around since, um, just, just she came just after Crawley started. Um, and she turns around and she goes, yeah, she goes, oh, she goes, you're really doing some, you know, wonderful things in your channel. I can't believe that I've got the opportunity to meet you and whatever. And I'm like, sweetheart, I've only got like 100 subscribers. I am nothing. <laughs> I am nothing. And she's like, no, 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 don't be like that. She goes, your content's really good. It's quite professional. And she was talking to me about my content and how much she actually enjoyed the Rivals Rivals series. And I, I went on then to say, and I'm like, oh, she's like, oh, what are you doing flying? And I'm just basically, and I'm just like, oh, I've been... I've been up to the to Newcastle for the A-League Grand Final. I said, I'm on my way home. I said, I've been staying with another YouTube guest who's on my channel, Josh Ferreira. And she responds with, oh, yeah, he's one of the guys from Rivals Revival. So Josh is sort of semi-YouTube famous now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I said, he's one of my good mates from, you know, years and years. and I've known him for years and years. And I said, I, I was staying with him because he lives in Newcastle. And she's like, oh, yeah, because you support the Jets. She knew that I supported the Jets because it's publicly known on my channel. Yep. Um, and she's like, she goes on to tell me that she, you know, she's a subscriber and that she enjoys my content and that I should be, I should be doing it, and that in her spare time when she's not being a flight attendant, she um, she likes to, she live streams her own um, FIFA and she's quite interested in live streaming her own um, first person shooter games. Yep. So you know, I said to her, you know, you know where my channel is, you know, drop a. If you're a subscriber, drop a comment or whatever, or or private message me on. Um, slide into those DMs. On on just slide into the DMs on <laughs> Twitter, and I said, you know, 
let me know about your your channel and and stuff, and I'll see what I can. I'll, and I'll I'll start promoting some of your stuff for you. Yep. You know, she's got relatively less subscriber base than what I do, which is you know. But I've I've been there. I know how hard it is. Yeah. The first. You know, 100 subscribers is difficult. It's, yeah, the hardest it's, it's thing you can do. It's a slog, and it looks like it never moves. Yeah. And it still looks like it never moves. Even now, currently, I think I said it 112. But, yeah, she and, and she, was, she was actually genuinely excited. And I was genuinely falling asleep. <laughs> Not because of her, obviously, but because I've just had a bloody long day. But, yeah, that's my YouTube famous story. Now, Ken, there's a follow-up question here. Have you since got in contact with her? Uh, no, not as yet. I'm I'm waiting for her to get on to me. Um, I have her first name. That's it. I have her. I have her first name, but I have no doubt she actually seemed um, rather enthralled about the prospect of working with with myself. And who knows? We could add a female member to Len. I know what you're laughing. <laughs> I ignored it because I wasn't making it dirty. No, and. That is something that obviously, as we do for each other, we also want to do for other people to help them uh, grow and feel supported is helping other people out. So it'd be amazing if she did get in touch with you because we'd be able to then share her content as well. And as you said, if it was to become that she was a part of the Lend Network, mm -hmm. that'd be even better because then it'd be a female voice in a predominantly, well, let's face it, a male, a male a industry. Group. Yeah. So well, not so much a male industry or a male group. Um, it's a more, you know, FIFA is very diverse. It's not. It's blah, blah, blah. FIFA is very non-diverse in the people that sort of stream it and play it. Yeah. I mean, you you would assume that you know ninety percent of the YouTube FIFA base is male. Yeah. Um. And you know, a lot of that FIFA, you know, YouTuber base as well. Very 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 little of it is Australian. Yeah, very little. So if you've got to put it into perspective, who knows? She could become the fee she could become the Australian bank. I'm sort of down the middle to Crawley, and that's the point why I split my series. Crawley is very professional, and I didn't want to come off too professional on my YouTube channel. I want because being professional doesn't look like that you're approachable. Yes. Hence why I created the Survivor Special and the um, Rival Survival series because it's just laid back. Yep. It, 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 they're like polar opposites. Um, but that's digressing from the actual point. You know, that you've got those YouTubers in Australia. They ain't a lot. Yeah. And again, I can only really talk about my experiences with the FIFA side. I don't know about a vlogging side. There's very little vlogging. Very little Australia. vlogging? Yeah. yeah, it's generally... Well not known concept. vlogging. Yeah, it, it, it's generally not a concept that's picked up quite well here. No. Um, doesn't mean it can't be done. I'm trying. Well, yeah, and I've sort of digressing and side-questing how there's a link for another big YouTuber um, into sort of like football away day vlogs. That was only ever meant to be a one episode random video that I did and it's now sort of turned into a series ish I mean there won't be an awful lot of them not unless people want to play for, pay for my flights to fly me halfway across the country to do one <laughs> yeah. it was more hey I've got the opportunity to do something here I'll record something and I'll go home and basically slap it together well, let's say now and here and now handshake agreement that next season when New Year's down here we go to that game always do I'm always here when you're here, mate. Let's record a co-hosted vlog. Yeah, we can do a co-hosted vlog. Well, I'm about to... The, the Jets one, the grand final one will be a co-hosted vlog. That's because my phone, again, was nearly dead. Yes. And Josh and his beautiful wife, Christy, recorded a lot of footage for me. And Josh did the whole intros and middle sections. Oh, you know, we're at halftime. Because I didn't have any battery his, on my phone to be able to do it. He got his big, fat, ugly head on it. But no, kudos to him. You know, maybe that maybe <laughs> that can be classed as his first step into content creation of his own. And hopefully, it is. Uh, yeah, and and, and uh, I mean, the concept he he can do a lot more sort of with that series that I did. 
considering he's based in Newcastle, so he can get to every home game. Yeah. Uh, you know, things permitting, obviously, like work and family and whatever. But, you know, maybe that's... Maybe I can pass that torch to him. Yeah. You know, may, or maybe it can be a sort of collaboration of sorts of... Because uh, mine's called away days. His can be home days, and maybe I could do the Melbourne away days. Yeah. Or do, like, a special Melbourne away days where we can, you know, sort of co-host that. Yeah, and, you know, it, it, again, it's a, it's something that we'd have to discuss and, you know, a concept we'd have to work through. And it's, it's a concept that we would put through to Len as well and get our ideas and feedback on. Alrighty, well, I think that just about does us for this episode of Hashtag Wireless Family with Corner Flag Games. Ben, thank you very much for being on this episode. Not a problem, mate. I, I, I thank you humbly for allowing me to come onto your channel and, and to do something of this nature. It's absolutely my pleasure. We've been good mates for a few years now and I always enjoy your company and I think we do create, enjoy creating content together. We do. So any chance I get, I always take it. And so you should. I, I much enjoy creating content, content with you as well. And hopefully people enjoy listening and watching it as well. well I hope they spend time listening to it. It's, it's, it's going to be a long one, lads. <laughs> and ladettes. Buckle down, April. She's coming. Buckle down, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so now that you've fastened your seatbelts and prepared for landing, let's bring this ship home. Nice segue. <laughs> I do. This is a job. Thank you for watching this episode of Hashtag Wireless Family with Corner Flag Games. As mentioned before, all the links will be down in the description below to all the things we've discussed, such as the LEN network, the website, and Twitter. Ben's YouTube and Twitter will also be down below, as well as the Discord we are all on. We are looking to create a big community in there, so it would be amazing if you guys could check that out. Thank you for watching, and stay awesome. Peace. See ya.